Uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay, am I on? Yes, okay, good. One more. Okay, let's reimagine Rowtown. Imagine a place you're going to go visit or somewhere you may want to live that has beautiful scenes, incredible beaches, amazing nature, places to explore, and a, a city center that's not just beautiful, but an amazing place to live in that is uh, completely connected and wonderful to live in. We have here in the BVI the beaches and the views. We have the nature trails, we do have areas to explore, but we don't quite have that fantastic, beautiful city center yet. So what are we gonna do about it? Are we gonna go with how things are going right now? Or do we maybe try to find some way of changing the path we're on? Main Street, I believe, it gives us that quick opportunity to do an experiment, an urban experiment. Uh, here we have Main Street from the old days to today. Uh, the big difference, obviously, the cars are taking over that street. And it is my belief that they're devaluing that street incredibly. Main Street actually in Road Town only ever existed, and most people don't know this, between Joe's Hill, about there, to Fort Burt, which is here. That was the extent of Road Town, or back then called Road Harbor Town. Now the street, Main Street back then was the only way through. It was the main uh, avenue of commerce. It had uh, families living on the street and as an, uh, a pedestrian street actually worked incredibly well. This is something as an architect we aspire to, to, uh, to design into our, our centers. Uh, the, uh, Main Street is a historic street. It is our only ex historic street. We have the old museum, we have the Govern Governor's Museum, we have uh, the Post Office, which could use some serious work, um, <laughs> but could be beautiful once again. The old Folk Museum, the old Customs House, and the new old Prison Museum. But also, there are areas and small uh, zones and alleys that are of interest. And once we take back Main Street and turn it into something incredible, we then, these areas can actually start to enhance their status on the street. So now we have change ahead. How can we get to turning into the main street from one long car park into something that actually makes change to the whole of Rotown? Well, we have an over-dependency on our cars. I think it's safe to say a slight addiction. So we need to maybe think of it as a step program for us to move out of it. Step one. We have to think of becoming autoimmune. Basically, trying to think we don't need to park our car on Main Street. And, and doing so stops us enjoying it. Um, I'm not saying that vehicles aren't allowed down Main Street at all. They'll still need access. But we have to stop parking. Step two, deconstructing the street. Without the cars there, we have a chance to do a proper infrastructure rebuild. We can take care of the drainage with new materials such as thirsty concrete, which continuously drains hundreds of gallons per minute, uh, or the power lines that crisscross above our heads all come underground. We have a chance to future-proof Main Street and the associated with the buildings on the side. So step three, humanizing the street, bringing the design back uh, here, uh, uh, Main Street is a historic street, so we can start to use textures such as the road are important to evoke this history. Um, putting in trees but keeping them pruned high is very important to keep uh, um, the visual contact with uh, the stores. And of course, with a pedestrian street, cafes and other stores can start to interact again with the street. Um, this basically will start to make Main Street, a, give it a sense of place, and I believe re, uh, increase the value of all the buildings and areas down that street, starting to bring back residents. Step four, maintenance. Well, as you saw before, we have the retractable bollards. These, I believe, are the best system to be able to control at various times uh, access into the roads. 
uh, say from 2 a.m. to 8 a.m., they come down to allow for deliveries or garbage collection. But otherwise, through the day, they're up. Uh, if emergency vehicle comes, they'll have proximity sensors to go down for emergency access. But otherwise, the other beauty, uh, the, but these, these will be, um, I think, the best solution. We will have growing pains, no doubt. I'm sure we'll have a couple instances of these, but I'm sure they will be short-lived. So this also gives us, the beauty of it is that it still allows pedestrian bicycles, but now we can start to think of new industries for the historic road. We can bring back the horse and cart for tourists or even locals to take to do the historic trip and bring a new significance to that road. Step five. This I call the domino effect. This idea that we say we have, we have a successful street now. The streets coming into, road into Main Street uh, no longer have that um, necessity of what they were built for, which is to bring cars in. So this green um, vein that started in Main Street can now start to evolve the nearby alleys and other streets for urban art or just new stores. So now, can we take this experiment, assuming it worked, from the micro of Main Street to the macro of Roadtown? Uh, will these five simple steps be translatable? So step one, auto immunity. Uh, no cars allowed to park in Roadtown. This is critical to its success. Uh, here we can see a map roughly of all the area that's given over to cars for roads or parking. Uh, some possible future parking, but it, it, this equates to about 60% of the land that's used for this purpose. Uh, I believe this land is far too valuable, and we can find far better things to do with it. Um, also, we have to inspire people to not use their car, uh, or not feel that they have to use it every day. Uh, the, most, the way I feel that would benefit all of us and can be done right now or yesterday is a really good public transportation system that's island-wide. Uh, you don't have to park right in town. You can park at nodes outside to be able to, to, get your, um, to, be able to access the road town. And again, as you can see, uh, the same amount of people might be slightly off, uh, but uh, a bus can help uh, alleviate the strain on the roads, and obviously maintenance can come down. So step, uh, step two, deconstructing. Now, without the traffic, without the massive car park problems that we see almost daily on Facebook, um, without the smog and, and other health issues, uh, we can start, again, reanalyzing our infrastructure. Drainage is still one of the most difficult problems to tackle in Roadtown. But now we have our roads back, we can start dealing with them quickly and properly. Step three, humanizing. The roads don't have to be roads. We can turn them into lawns. Uh, we can start rethinking there's so much space. And our schools, for instance, are, are full. Create a brand new school right in the city center. Uh, it's safe now. Kids can run around, mothers in prams. We don't have to worry about the cars uh, being a problem. Uh, we can have urban farms, uh, new parks, bike lanes, and then runners around Roadtown will be able to w run with, uh, with uh, new areas that are green, shady, and, and wonderful to be in. Step four, maintaining this. So now, as I said, no cars are parking in, in town. We will need satellite car parks, but these have to be kept outside of the city center if we have any hope of actually making a real change. Uh, without that, it's, it's not going to happen. So at the car parks, you can have a cooperative of bikes that you go pick up and drop off anywhere. Uh, in Mexico, they have these, uh, what are the trikes, which are solar powered. They can be the equivalent of the taxi in the city center. And then in Heathrow, they are using these pods. Uh, only 23 of these move 1,500 people a day automatically from the far distant, from the long-term car park or distant car park into their terminals. All of these can be used to make sure that we have a new way to get around Roadtown, apart from our feet. So step five, we've got now our green city back.
we hope. We've found new ways, and not just for today. We can, this is setting up the ability so our future designers and our future planners have something to work with. If we just leave it with cars, that's probably the end of, of Roadtown, apart from having to reclaim more and more land, but use it for cars. I think we need to rethink how we think of our city center. So now it's a call, oh, so, sorry, uh, the domino effect, stage five. So now we can, this hopefully model moves on to East End, gets to the valley, uh, Anigata. It's, it's a model that can work pretty much anywhere, and we can then be the pioneers in the Caribbean, if not the world, by making a completely carbon neutral center. Uh, we are part of the Paris Agreement by default, so we can actually um, do our bit and beat the dates. So now it's a call to action. I'd like, if you all agree with my thoughts, uh, please, we have to get a voice together. We need to start um, going to the meetings to say how we want to see Roadtown developed. Either we accept it for the cars and, um, and the, the, the health of the city may deteriorate further. The car problem will not get better. It's only going to get worse. So if we don't make a big step, one, of autoimmunity, uh, we, we may set ourselves on a track that's maybe not for the best of Rotown or the BVI as a whole. Rotown is our handshake to the world. So we can make it something incredibly special and different, or as my initial picture, the not so inspired uh, look of it today. Uh, oh, sorry. So if we think that's difficult, which it will be, it will take a lot of work, but 60-ish years ago today, this is what Roadtown looked like. Uh, there was no Wickham's Key 1 or 2, really. Those, uh, the main street itself was pretty much the same as that original map. But in that time, we reclaimed 150 or so acres of land, of which only 60%, as I said, is actually used for something other than car. Or 60% so is used for cars. So again, we need to rethink how we look at Roadtown and how we use it. So my goal is to take back our streets, take them away from the cars, and give them back to our, our people and our communities. And, um, and really, I think it's, it's, it's critically important we do this now, sooner than later. These are topics that are current, and decisions are getting made. So it's, uh, there is an urgency in this matter. Thank you.